Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Uh, we are several weeks into the ladder, and I figure I might as well get started back on my Unique Item series. I know I've been a little bit lax on getting my videos out, but, uh, you know, keeping uh, keeping up with one video every single day, uh, not to mention two videos every single day, uh, took a lot of my effort, and of course during the ladder, most of my effort was to getting my character leveled up and geared. Um, so today we're going to be go over and going going blah, 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 blah. we're going to be going over the crush flange mace. Now the crush flange mace is a relatively low level item that can be found relatively early, and uh, and although it doesn't really quite have the right stats or damage that you would like, it does have some very standout mechanics, and uh, we'll be going over it today. Um, as you can see right off the bat, it is only 4 to 16 damage, but that's actually quite nice for level 9. Um, level 9 is a relatively low level for this item. Um, it has a strength requirement of only 27, uh, which is low enough that most characters can utilize this with no problem. Um, it is a mace class, which does mean that you're not going to be able to use this on, like, for instance, a, uh, uh, you know, a lot of characters just specifically revolving around the, um, like the mace class mechanic so like no frenzy barb mercenaries are using this um you know you're not probably not going to use this on a sword barbarian that's building into sword masteries and things like that uh, so keep that in mind uh, we also have a 60 uh, percent enhanced damage on here which does vary by 10 percent it's only 50 to 60 uh 33 percent crushing blow which is pretty massive and quite honestly can help you take down um uh, bigger monsters relatively easily uh that's kind of the main gimmick of this particular item is it seems to be focused around bigger monsters. Uh, we also have a, a knockback effect on here which does diminish its uses. It's one of the big drawbacks of this, but it works fairly well with any ability that already has knockback on it. Uh, like for instance, if you are a barbarian who is using bash early on, if you're a paladin who's using smite, uh, there are definitely some options that you could get some good use out of your crush flange. Uh, it also has plus 15 strength, which is pretty massive, and that also functions as off-weapon ED, so you get a nice little, uh, uh, what is, I think it's like 1% or 10% per level or strength point or something. So it's like 15, it's a 15% off-weapon ED, that's right. Uh, we also get a massive 50% fire resistance, which is uh, honestly one of the main resistances you even need in Act 1 difficulty, so it's kind of cool that it has that. Uh, plus 2 to light radius, and of course it gets the passive 50% bonus to undead. Now of course you can also find this in the ethereal form, but unfortunately because of its... Uh, obviously breakability um, it doesn't really do you very much good i mean at level nine you could certainly use it until it breaks and uh and just move on but um if you actually wanted to somehow utilize this permanently you would have to put a zod rune in it and i just don't think it's worth it um one thing that we can do though is we can look at uh, what it is like to upgrade this item uh, so the first upgrade is relatively cheap at a ral rune and a soul rune um, and then you're also going to need a perfect emerald. And, uh, and like I said, this is a fairly cheap upgrade. Most people are not going to be complaining about this. And I believe the damage is actually going to bump up quite nicely, if I remember correctly. Uh, so we're going to put our Ral, our Soul, and our perfect emerald. And uh, we're going to go from... Yep. 4 to 16 damage, 27 strength, level 9. To 24 to 36... 61 strength, level 28. Not a bad little upgrade there, and certainly could be worth it if you were utilizing this specifically for the uh, crushing blow um, and the uh, and the damage. That way you could get a little bit more physical damage out of it along with the crushing blow. It would certainly come in handy killing uh, Diablo in normal difficulty, Bale in normal difficulty. Um, and if you didn't have any other crushing blow item, you could certainly even use this well into Nightmare and even Hell difficulty, uh, specifically for the crushing blow, and then obviously take it off when you're finished. The Ethereal version can also be upgraded. Uh, 6 to 24 damage, 17 strength, level 9, which goes to 35 to 54 damage, uh, 51 strength, and level 28. Uh, now, we can upgrade this one more time, and this upgrade is probably not going to be worth, worth it. Uh, but we're going to do it anyway, because that's what I like to do. So we're going to do, uh, you're going to need a Pull Rune, and you're going to need a Lum Rune for this upgrade. 
Uh, this is a much more expensive upgrade. And uh, basically, you're going to take your Pull Rune, your Lum Rune, and your Perfect Emerald, and we're going to go from 35 to 54 on the Ethereal version, 51 Strength, level 28, to the Reinforced Mace, uh, 97 to 116, 36 Dexterity, 135 Strength, level 59. A level requirement is actually still quite low, so that's actually not bad. And we're going to upgrade the normal version too. So 24 to 36, 61 strength, level 28. To uh, 65 to 78, 46 dex, 145 strength, and level 59. As you can see, it doesn't really upgrade very well to the third tier. Uh, unfortunately, 65 to 78 damage is just not good enough for this particular tier. And uh, 97 to 116 is definitely not good enough for a Zod rune. So I wouldn't probably not put a Zod rune in that. Um, as for this item, uh, what classes and what characters get the most used out of this. Um, in my opinion, because of the knockback, it limits its potential on melee characters. Uh, for instance, I wouldn't use this on a Zeal Paladin. Um, I wouldn't use this on a lot of characters, actually, because of the knockback. But uh, the interesting thing is, is that the Crushing Blow um, is the main draw of this item, and bosses cannot be knocked back. So when you're fighting Diablo, when you're fighting Bale, when you're fighting Duriel, um, a Zeal Paladin actually could get good use out of this, specifically to abuse the Crushing Blow mechanic. Uh, the Crushing Blow mechanic, of course, is when a monster takes 25% of their HP in damage, their current HP, not their maximum. Uh, bosses take 12.5%, and uh, the PvP is 10%. But um, if you can imagine, if you can't knock back a target, you could, of course, zeal the target with this weapon uh, just simply to use the Crushing Blow. You could also put it on with a shield, and you could utilize Smite. Smite already has knockback on it, um, and knockback cannot be added to Smite, so it doesn't make the knockback any worse than Smite already has. Um, you know, and, and then on top of that, it also has the 50% fire resistance, which is pretty massive. Um, if you found this early on, the 50 fire resistance and the 15 strength by itself could make this a fairly effective stat stick for a character that might not otherwise have a better weapon or, or item at that time. Like, for instance, take a Necromancer or a Sorceress. Um, if you had, like, a really nice shield, but you didn't quite have a good wand or, you know, a orb to put in that slot, 15 strength and 50 fire resistance certainly isn't bad uh, for, you know, a stat stick uh, with a level 9. You know, it's not bad at all. Um, all in all, though, I think this item is just relegated to a low-level character. Um, there are better Crushing Blow items that you can get eventually. Like, for instance, uh, you can make the Black Rune Word, which is certainly very nice. And, uh, and by the time you reach level 59, which is what this upgrades to, uh, there are certainly better options than the 33% Crushing Blow that this provides. Um, it doesn't provide anything particularly that great, and unfortunately the physical damage, the actual physical damage of the weapon, is just so low that it doesn't really quite work out the way that you would want. Um, in fact, I would even say that there are better items at this level that you could potentially be using instead. Um, there is a axe that I can think of right off the top of my head that um, actually is pretty darn good for a low-level character. Um, it's the Nasher Hand Axe, and the Nasher Hand Axe not only has a crushing blow on it, it also has open wounds as well, and would honestly be a better choice for like a smiter or something like that early level just to get the uh, crushing blow and the open wounds together as opposed to only the crushing blow. Anyway, I feel like I've talked enough on the Crush Flange Mace. The Crush Flange Mace is certainly an interesting item. And I will give it this, if you found this early on in a solo cell found character, or so, like a single player character, you're going to have fun with it. It's going to be useful. You're going to be able to use it to kill bosses. You're going to be able to use it to do some things. It's not going to be your main weapon, but you can certainly find some use for it. Um, later on, though, when you're a much higher level character and you find a Crush Flange Mace, you're like, meh. <laughs> and you throw it on the ground. As for the ethereal version, I don't think the ethereal version has any use except for as a low-level character. Um, if you do find an ethereal one, don't hesitate to just use it and burn it up because I really don't see any specific purpose for a ethereal crush flange mace over anything else. Um, uh, unless you're just going to use it as a stat stack for the 15 strength and the 50 fire resistance, which um, obviously it doesn't have to be ethereal to get those bonuses.
Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, and uh, even when I am crushing things with my flange, <laughs> as always, keep watching.